have held a sacred trust with water and with a vibration on the planet for centuries, for thousands of years. And I think that's important. So I will leave this presentation now to them, Becky and Vernon. What a beautiful welcome, uh, children out there sharing their voices with us. When you sing, you think it first, and then you breathe in the, the air and the air moves the water up through your larynx, out of, through the tongue, out of the mouth, and the music is formed. That's how mysterious and very important and sacred water is. We come from Arizona, United States, southwestern Arizona, uh, we settled in our area over a thousand years ago. Um, one of the villages of Oraibi is considered the uh, longest continuously inhabited community in the North American continent. We're very, very proud of that, and there's about 800 people still living there. At one time, it was a big population. We uh, are glad to be here. My thanks to Yanni for his generosity, bringing us here and treating us so royally. I don't want to go home. <laughs> but I have to. Uh, so we are glad to be here with you. And I'll share you a little bit of who we are. Hopi Sinom. Motisinom we call ourselves, meaning first people. Um, using pictures. Well, we normally don't do this. My wife Becky is the one that runs the operation. I just follow her around, totally dependent on her. She does all the work. I'm very thank thankful for that. Thank you again. <clears throat> Lolma, good morning. Kwa kwa. Umay tamoy peo ngemna ya. Pas umay tamoy tabia. Tabude pa light. Ko itam piu umay kwatsta. Umay yet tangao takamoy. Pude tapio ha light. Good morning, everybody. We are honored to be here for treated, being treated so kindly. We are thankful for that. We are thankful for the knowledge that you shared with us during the last couple of days. I am really not into uh, what you call uh, extra terrestrial beings. Uh, I just never really got into that and I think I know why. And I will explain that later on. Uh, Black Mesa Trust was formed by Hopi elders 1998 we are a nonprofit organization. We do not 
accept any government grants. We depend totally on the generosity of the people who have faith in us and believe in what we're doing. And that is how we operate. We, our Black Mesa Trust staff consists of myself and my wife, that's it. Everybody else volunteers to help us. And we're very thankful for getting so many people to join our circle of directors and advisors. Black Mesa Trust mission is to save water using a combination of Western science, Hopi knowledge and wisdom. That's how we work to save the water. <coughs> mining operation, the world's largest strip mining operation, started on our land in 1970. From 1970 to the present time, over 45, close to 50 billion gallons of fossil water, that's ice age water, was pumped out by the company. Uh, and the water is used to transport ground coal. Uh, 270 miles into Nevada, the neighboring state, to Arizona. And we wanted to do something about that, save water for future generation, because 45 billion gallons of water would sustain the entire Hopi population for over 300 years. We are a small group of people. And we use water wisely. We use and reuse water. Many households still, by choice, do not have running water in their homes. They haul their water in buckets from the springs, like we did in the old days. So we're very conservative. The mining company feed two stations, Mojave and Navajo generating stations, two of the largest plants in the United States. Navajo generating station was done by United States Congress to provide cheap, reliable electricity to bring water from Colorado River. Over a 320 mile canal and aqueduct, open aqueduct, to provide water for Phoenix and Tucson and reliable, low-cost electricity for millions of customers in central and southern Arizona, southern California, and Nevada. That was the reason Congress authorized and put up money, 100 million bucks, to build the Navajo Generating Station. We uh, organized to to shut the mine down so we can save water for future generations of our children. And we do that relying on the wisdom and knowledge of our elders 
and on science, we use the two. We have a strand that we use to to uh, demonstrate this. And this is what it is. It means many other things, but for this purpose, we combine Western science, indigenous wisdom. If you want a cop, I mean, a, uh, a string, well, leave on the table and you can pick it up. Someone said after my speech, you know what that's called? Vernon string theory. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's now give the introduction. From the villages. Okay. This guy doesn't know how to follow PowerPoints. That's where he was starting. Got any villages? Farming. Yeah, farming. So one of the reasons that we were fighting for our water is because Hopis have been farmers in a desert for thousands of years. And so it's very important that um, we, ha we have that belief that, you, you know, you preserve, you save uh, water, never waste water. So here it, you see pictured is a farmer, a Hopi farmer from, I don't know, probably the 1800s picture or late 1800s picture. Uh, farming in his field. That is the photo of a village on top of a mesa. Uh, Black Mesa where uh, we live and where the farm, I mean mining is going on, is shaped like a human hand. Like this. The mining is here. The villages are at the three fingers. Uh, we call it first mesa, second mesa, third mesa. This picture here is on second mesa, a village called Musangnubi. It's a very important village. It's uh, part of the Hopi creation stories. Uh, which is another, another ta story I can tell you about. We teach through stories, and that's what I'm doing. I'm a storyteller. We Hopis are, are nonviolent people. We don't believe in making war. We are conscientious objectors. And because of that, our men refuse to serve in the military and refuse to obey the federal government's dictatorial dictates. And for that, they were taken to prisons. This one our elders from my village of Hotvela. And they were put on Alcatraz because they thought as people living in the United States, they were protected by the Constitution that honors their right to their own way of life and to their religion. And for refusing to do that, they were uh, shackled up and taken to Alcatraz. There is a, they were charged with, um, what was the name of it? Seditious Act. Sed against the government. Act of Sedition. They were kept there about 18 months. The other group uh, uh, were taken to uh, Japanese uh, prison camps during World War II because again they refused to 
a fight. And when my uncle, Roger, who passed away two years ago, was uh, at the camp near Tucson. And he befriended a Japanese doctor. And from him, he learned the Japanese language. And he, Hopi language. One day, a group of Japanese tourists came, 30 of them, from the Goy Foundation. They were looking for a place to plant a peace pipe, pole. And they were told to go to Hopi. So they did. They didn't know where to put it. They, don't, they didn't know anybody there. But someone told them, go to him, me. He'd been to Japan. So they came. And spent several days with us. And I took them to my village. And the ladies were having a food sale in the plaza. And uh, the ladies came out and invited uh, guests to come in, buy their food. They all did. Then they want to perform a ceremony. He said, OK, for us to do a ceremony. He said, let me ask my uncle. He lives right there. So I went inside the house and told Roger that there was a request by the Japanese guest if they would do a ceremony. So he came out. And I was just totally surprised that he started talking to them in Japanese. <laughs> it was really, really a shock to me to see a Hopi his age, never been to Japan, talking Japanese. And they did a ceremony. And before they left, they knocked on the door about 4 o'clock in the morning. And I went out, and here were all of them. And they pointed to the ground. And there was the peaceful. They planted it right there. When I was making a patio, I left a circular area. I did, I, I did cover it. I just left it open. And my grandsons would say, how come you never finish your job? We'll do it for you. I said, no, it's leaving, leave it alone. And that was where they put the peace pole. It's still there. What an honor. Yes. We uh, Hopi people are children of coal, of, of uh, maize, corn. We call maize, corn, mother, mother. Because before we started to plant corn domestically, we were, our people were out there always looking for something to eat, wild corn. Until one day, they figured out how they can plant it. Once they started doing that, they raised enough corn that they could store it. They didn't have to be out there every day looking for food. So they had time to do th things, make things, and for example, making a textile that's all woven by man. Then they organized their religion and did many other things and created a civilization. That's why we call corn mother of our civilization, mother. We raise six varieties of corn. Yeah, we. I couldn't find the purple one. Yeah, you. 
purple one. Yeah, the purple one is not in the picture. We didn't get all of it. Six varieties of corn. And those six varieties of corn re uh, represents six directions. Six directions. Uh, the sweet corn represents what we call the lower world, meaning the depth of the ocean from whence we all came, all life comes from there. We come to earth, our bodies are solidified, but inside is still sacred water. When our body dies, the water in our body ascends to the cloud people as vapor, as mist, breath to the cloud people, to the celestial sea. On this earth, there are four major races of people. White, that's why we have the white corn. Blue corn, red corn, yellow corn. So add that to the sweet corn and you got five. Then the sixth one is the home of the cloud people, our ancestors, who are still with us today. They continue to be part of the hydraulic cycle. When they reach the home of the clouds, they come back down as rain and snow, water the plants. replenish the lakes, aquifers. As they come down, they come down, hit the earth, and start going back home to the ocean through the river. We're going back home. They get to the ocean, rest, and they come back again and repeat the cycle. Here is a picture of a water crystal that we took from one of our wells up on Black Mesa where the mining is. And this is the water that Peabody Coal Company was using, wasting. And if you look within the crystals, you notice it's formed around six points. Six points. Responding to the six directions. Uh, water is like a glue. It connects our continent to other continents, other islands, to the universe. Water is the glue that binds all life, all life here in the universe. That's why we say water is life, water is sacred, 
Water is a living spirit. That feels Uh, I, I said that um, earlier that we are liquid. We transition from liquid to solid. And we represent it by this water gourd. The gourd is the body. Inside is the sacred water. That's what that represents. And uh, see a picture of the cloud with blue, red, yellow. They represent the water, the sun, and the earth. That's what that cloud symbol represents. And you see rain coming down and it forms a symbol, a water uh, energy symbol. You know, like this. Uh, yeah, that, that one right there. Down by Okay. Like I just got through talking, we all come from Patiwakatsi, a water world, the ocean. And we represent that with a sweet corn. We come to the earthly world, we call it Tiwakatsi, Patiwakatsi means, comes from the word bahu, water. Tuwa, sand. Katsi, life. So it means water, sand, life. Ba katsi. Then we go to tuwa katsi. Land, life, the sand world. And it's represented by four colors of corn, varieties of corn, white, blue, red, yellow, representing four major races of people here on earth. When we pass away, we go up to what we call Tokbela, the cloud world the celestial sea. And that is represented by a purplish corn we call Maasau's mother. Uh, we'll talk about Maasau a little bit later, who Maasau is. We rest there and we come back. And go back up and come back. Endless, infinite cycle. And because we are all water people, we will live eternally. As long as there's water, we are here, we're going to be here. Okay. And you did that one already. Um, I did about the coal. Okay. Um, Black Mesa Trust, as I said, was organized to save water, sacred waters. And the mining started in 1970. And so here you have a picture of how they operate. They got these huge machines. The first thing they do is they'll just level off the ground. Cut down all the bushes, the trees. Then they start digging into the coal vein. 
And in the process of leveling and cleaning out the brushes, the trees, they destroy hundreds of archaeological sites. They are homes of our ancestors who settled there before they settled in the villages. That's where they first settled. So there are literally, uh -uh, uh, not literally, but more specifically, according to Peabody website, they did a survey within their leasehold area and discovered 2,500 archaeological sites. 2,500. Unknown number of burial sites. So we have no idea how many of our homes, which represents our footprints, our memory of who we are, of where we came from. They literally tore pages from our history, erase our footprints. We don't know how many sites were deliberately destroyed, accidentally destroyed, Saved. We have no idea of the magnitude of the destruction. We have no idea how many of our burials have been destroyed. So Black Mesa area is literally a grave, a graveyard, and the federal mining. Regulation, law and regulations prohibits mining in a cemetery. But that's ignored because Phoenix need water, Tucson need water. They got to figure out a way to get it there and the best way is to use coal and lots of water. Okay. Before the mining started, to, uh, here's the coal seam, mm -hmm. how thick it is. It's the richest coal, the best coal you can find anywhere in the world. Why so much coal in a dry desert is what I can't figure out. No one can. You know, coal comes from plants. So this, at one time, must have been literally under the water. It must be a swampland with all kinds of dinosaurs wandering around. Um, you know, how come? Okay. Before the mining started in 1970, right here. Yeah, right the Right there. That was the amount of water we were using that went from there to there. Then the mining started. And Peabody started pumping water up. This is Peabody. Oh, yep, that's the Peabody one right there. Look, look how huge, huge it is compared to how much water we were using. We were able to miraculously, and I think with the help of the people out there somewhere, we did shut down the Coast Lurie Pipeline. Something people said was impossible, but we succeeded. Mining in one lease hole ended 2005. And the coal from that lease hole was the one that transported water to Laughlin, Nevada, to a giant coal-fired generating station, using on the average of 4,000 acre feet of water. 4,000 acre feet of water. 
an acre feet contains 326,000 gallons. Peabody paid us. It's not actually Peabody, it's owners of Mojave Generating Station in Nevada paid us through Peabody $1.67 for an acre feet of fossil water. $1.67 for three, every 326,000 gallons of pristine drinking water, the best you can find anywhere in the world. Healing water, beautiful water, that's gone, that's gone. Mining is still going on, it's using much less water now, 1,200 acre feet, but that's still more than what the entire Hopi population is using, which is why we want to end the mining. And I believe, again, with the help of people out there, our ancestors, we are going to succeed. I'm convinced of that. It took a long time. And now we've been running Black Mesa Trust for 25 years. We got some ways to go. But I think we will finally achieve our goal, and particularly with your, with your support. To save, to bring attention to what's happening to our sacred sites, to our historical sites, we put together a resolution called Declaration of Memory, uh, which will protect historical sacred sites, not just on our land, on Colorado Plateau, but all over the world. We're doing it for the world. They are repositories of our memories and they need to be preserved and not destroyed. That really had motivated us to do this was the destruction of one of the oldest sacred temples somewhere, I forgot what country, maybe Afghanistan or something, that was destroyed. You know, and many other have been destroyed as a result of war that's going on. So to save our area, we introduced that resolution to bring attention, international attention, to what's happening. We also want to do that to preserve Sipa Apuni. Sipa Apuni. Very sacred site, place of emergence from the third world, the Hopi, to the present fourth world. Okay, beautiful again. That is a graph put together by a government hydrologist uh, connecting the earth through the moon through 55 gallon water barrels full, full of water. And he said that at the rate the mining is going, the amount of water being used, you could fill three You know, Stop. barrels of 55 gallons of water right there. That's not ours. That came from a, a, a federal hydrologist who wants to remain anonymous. Okay. <coughs> this is um, Prophecy Rock. Picture of Prophecy Rock. Down at the bottom is the third world, our motherland from whence we came. We came because the leaders of 
the cities in Mexico, Central America, Maceo America, we call it, became very corrupted, evil. So those cities were destined to be destroyed. Our elders knew about it. And they got together and say, we have to leave this place, find a safe homeland for our children. But where can we go? We came here to the third world from somewhere One old man said, we came from Bethlehem. We were guided by the sun. We rode boats, rafts, made of bamboo. In those days, it, the continent was broken up into tiny little islands. So we jumped from one island to another island until the people, our ancestors, landed in the Gulf of Mexico. Somewhere near Veracruz, where Columbus also landed. And they started the Third World They were taught how to build these beautiful pyramids by people, by people whose technology is so advanced. They didn't need any machinery to build the pyramids. My mentor, Jerry Honawa, who knows more about this than I do, was not able to build here because the doctors diagnosed him with uh, lung cancer. So he can't travel. So I really miss him. He is the one to tell the story. Then they left and left us, okay, in their custody. But they left us to be guardians of the land. And we tried, but we failed. We're failing today. And this tells the story. When we came here, right there, on this side is a picture of Masa. On the other side is a perfect circle. Right above that, you could barely see it right there, is a picture of the uh, cross. That's when the Europeans came, the Spaniards. And they were, they had this concept of property. So with each step they took, they said, this is mine, this is mine. We are taking this in behalf of the King of Spain. And that's what they did to us. They took control of our land. We couldn't fight back because we're, we don't believe in that kind of a thing. We thought they would come and help us, but they forced us into their religion. They outlaw our religious ceremonies. And so they took us up to the upper path right there, the first one, Muwati. You can, uh, but they, yeah, yeah, this way. Sorry. Yeah. They Christianized us, took away our names, gave us uh, Spanish names. Uh, and we're very brutal in suppressing those who denied their orders of not doing our religion, which they say is the religion of the heathen. He, he, heathen. 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 I'm sorry. And if they catch somebody doing it, they would take him to the plaza and burn him. Nevertheless, a lot of the 
priests went underground. Hopi priests. Hopis. Now, the bottom one line, see? That is Ma Sao's path. That's his path. You could see him here and then up here. Right there. Later on, the United States took the land over and did the same that the Spaniards did, forbid it, forbid the practice of our religion. Sent our young men to boarding schools where they kept them four years. During the, the time that they should be in getting initiated into various religious societies. They weren't there, which is why that broke down. The perfect circle broke. That upper path has an ending. That's the fourth world. We're at the 11th hour. But there is a connecting line right there. There's still a hope. That means hope. Hope. Now, also, you could barely see it, but there's a circle here and a circle there. This one here. And then a half circle there. Represents World War I, Two, three. The third one is not complete yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there is a prophecy song that says one day you will sell sacred water, which we did. For this you will be punished. Springs once abandoned will dry up and you will begin your exodus. You will lo lose the privilege of living here. You will have broken a covenant with me where you promise to follow my path in return for saying here, this is the safest place on earth. Jerry Hanna once said, every drop of rain has its song. Every, raindrop. every drop, raindrop has its own. That means every water drop is its own little universe, its own individual, an ancestor. And one of our friends uh, said, uh, water is a medium for growth to wonder is to grow, not to know. To grow, you grow spiritually. You grow muscles path. To know is you follow the upper path, which is the path of science and technology. To know. It has no heart. And that's what's driving us to the ending of the fourth world. We now worship the material things. And we're forgetting the sacred path. So we got to put it back together. Using science and technology, like that thread. We need to put it back together. And I think we are beginning to do that. I really do. I can sense that movement now starting. We are now working with science. I heard some beautiful messages from the scientists that were at our meetings last couple of days. And I am honored, very honored, that there is now this thinking that there needs to be a new paradigm. Einstein tried to figure out how energy comes about. 
And he said it's a mass multiplied by the speed of light twice. We have that same formula. Ener in our case, energy is man whose consciousness is raised. And that's what we need to do. Come together. Come together. Put our minds and hearts together and carry out our intent, which is to bring holiness back to earth, heal our mother, who is crying because she's ill. No one listening. We need to listen and help and do our part. We have to do it. No one else can do it for us. That's why one Hopi elder said, you are the ones you have been waiting for. Okay. The, there's the picture of Masa. I looked at it one day and said, that represents a, a water molecule. Two H and O, a water molecule. I just learned that about five years ago. Okay. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Already went through that. No, let's just go beyond. I already kind of mentioned that. We know. We don't speculate. We already know that there are so dim star people living out there on the Milky Way. And they're here with us. They appear to some people for some reason. But the hope is say, when we're at the ending of the fourth world, where we're in a verge of destroying it, they will begin to appear more and more frequently to more and more people because they're checking up on us to see if we're doing a good job taking care of the earth like we promised to do. And we're not doing it. Here are Katsinam. Katsinam. Like here is the Kiva. Here is the priest praying to the Katsinas. Katsinas come to us as sun, moon, lightning, snow, rain, animals, insects, whatever, as nature. And we befriend them. We join them. Anywhere, instantaneously, we become the moon. The moon becomes us. We are twins. We combine. When the Serkachina ceremony, dancing is over, we go back, separate. Another dance, this time it might be the star. See? Okay, by Basavan, by Dakhbita. Yeah. Uh, so you see some of the um, pictures of Kachinam, and we could talk quite a bit about that. They're here, they're visiting us. They're going to help us. Someone gave me this. I'm a member of the water coyote. They call me Coyote Boy. And that guy's Peabody. <laughs> 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 we went to Japan and actually met up with a guy that big, and I, I was that size. <laughs> so somebody gave that to me. OK, mm -hmm. now. Bypass, I thank you so much. But again, one more point. Together, we can. Together, we have the energy, the power to, to imagine, the power to make things, the ability to communicate. We have the Creator gifted us with those powers. 
We need to know how to use it. We are not aware of it. We don't know how to use it yet, but we need to do that. And together, we can. Kwa kwai, thank you.